welcome to another episode of Film Fetish. I'm your host CJ, and today we're going to do another episode of Actor Day. Now the actor of choice is the late, great Robert Zadar. Most of you may not know who he is, but the folks that do know he's a six foot tall, chin like a catcher's mitt badass. And today, we're going to take a look at five films that best represent how much this man truly loved his job, no matter how B or how big budget it was. So join me today for Actor Day, representing Robert Zadar. First up, we have my favorite B action movie of all time. I'm of course talking about the 1993 film Samurai Cop, which follows an LA detective as he hunts down the untouchable Yakuza boss. Now Robert Zadar shines as the main villain's henchman. He's a hulking suit wearing badass. Now, he really shines at the end of the film where him and the protagonist, Matt Hannon, have the climactic sword fight that is so poorly choreographed you'll be like uh, reimagining like you as a kid like stick fighting with your brother or sister. Amazing. If you love no budget action films that have so much heart put in them that doesn't really show on the screen, sorry, um, please check this one out. It's a ball of fun. Next up, we're going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to talk about the Maniac Cop Trilogy, simply because you can't really talk about one without the other, or the other, since there are three of them, math. Now all three films are a ton of fun. They all three feature Robert Zadar as our titular villain, they feature other fun characters such as Bruce Campbell and Robert Davi, and all three films were written by Larry Cohen from It's Alive and Q. Great B-movie you haven't seen, a terrible stop motion, but fun. Now the plot is simple. Wrongfully convicted police officer, he gets put in prison and is ultimately murdered by the convicts he put there. Now he's undead and he's back for revenge. It's at first up to Bruce Campbell to stop him and then later Robert Davi. These plots are, they don't make sense. Um, the first one, he's a simple police officer. They don't know who he is. They find out who he is. Second one, they know who he is. He's pissed off. He's ugly, etc. Third one is like a weird Bride of Frankenstein copy and voodoo and it's freaking bizarre. Needless to say, all three of them are incredible in their own right. They're super gory, great squib work. Robert Zadar speaks like once in all three films, but he, his presence alone is worth watching these movies. If you love great B movies or you love Robert Zadar, find them, watch them, you'll love them. Next up is Final Sanction. It's an action movie from the early 90s that clearly had no budget. The entire set budget was like $4. They take place in these concrete bunkers 99% of the time or in like big blacked out warehouses. It's adorable. He is tasked with facing off against an American Special Forces soldier in a tournament that the United States and Russia have set up to avoid World War III. The film, as I said, had no budget, but the lighthearted tone and chemistry between Ted Pryor and Robert Zadar as they face off against each other is incredible. And as I said at the beginning of the video, Robert Zadar loves his profession no matter how much money he was making. And it shines on screen because he has given it his all. And there's simply nothing to hate about this film. It has a two-person body count and an ending you probably won't see coming. If you haven't seen it, it's on Amazon Prime, not a sponsor. Check it out. Final Sanction. Next up is a weird genre of movie. I'm of course talking about 1991's gangster film, Mobsters, starring Christian Slater and Michael Gambon. Yeah, that's right, Harry Potter's very own Dumbledore plays the main villain. And his right hand man is a dual machine gun wielding beast of a man, played by Robert Zadar. Now let that sink in for a moment. We have a villain who is dual wielding Tommy guns in one segment of the film. Now also imagine that this is a $25 million dead serious gangster film about the rise of Lucky Luciano and his associates. Now consider that the fact that somehow in the script they wrote it as a campy low budget B film. And you just throw all this together with beautiful cinematography and now you understand why it's a weird genre film. Because it's too campy to be serious and it's too serious to be fun. But by God, the three scenes that Robert Zadar is in it are amazing. And you have to see it just for him and his beautiful Italian accent. Oh, and his beautiful mustache. I almost blinked. So check it out. Last film of the day, we have Return to Frogtown. To you people out there, all six of you that are going, someone's keeping that alive. Um, it's a sequel to a film called 
Hell Comes to Frogtown, starring Rowdy Roddy Piper. Now, this being a sequel, has Robert Zadar playing Rowdy Roddy Piper's character Sam Hell from the original film. Oh, I can totally see the resemblance. The plot of the film follows Robert Zadar's Sam Hell. Still don't see it. As he has to infiltrate the titular frog town to rescue his friend, played by Lou Ferrigno, the freaking Hulk himself. And the rest of the film follows their attempt to escape this horrific town of animatronic frog people. They look like lizards. I don't... whatever. Low budget. This movie's fun. Just go into it very stoned and you will just absolutely have a blast. And there we go. Those are five of my favorite Robert Zadar performances. He has many more. He was in over like 125 films. You definitely should go out of your way to look up. Maybe not all of them. Most of them. If there's any lists you'd like to see me do, please leave those in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe for future content. This has been Film Fetish. I'm your host, CJ, and please remember to keep it lowbrow.